In this integration project, I'm going to go through and create a very simple um, employee class, which will allow you to see actually how to uh, set up, <coughs> excuse me, getters and setters, constructors, uh, as well as put the package together and implement it with the main class. So I'm going to create a new class, and it's class employee. There we go. And let's add some data elements. We'll say int ID. And let's say string. Let's say last name, comma, first name. And let's also create a salary. So this is a full-time employee, just as, as, as an example. And if we save that, now we have some very simple data elements. Um, we might want to, at this point, create constructors. So for example, we could say public employee. And since uh, this is going to be the default constructor, we will not include any parameters. And we'll say the ID equals 0, just as a, as a default. Um, we'll say the last name equals no name. Again, as a default. And then let's group first name. I'm just going to copy this. It's the same thing. And so, just to be clear, the the, the role of the of this constructor, let's say salary equals 0, 0.0 since it's a double. Now, the role of this is to if if somebody tries to create an employee object with no parameters, that is, with no information, just a an empty employee object, this is what we'll populate the object with. Now, let's create an overloaded constructor. And we'll say int id uh, string last name string first name salary. So these are the values, these are the parameters that are being passed in. That is, these are the values that are being supplied. So if you wanted to create an employee object and you wanted to create it fully loaded with information that you specify, this is the information you would pass in. So we're going to say this dot ID equals ID to differentiate between the data element on the left side of the equal sign and the parameter being passed in on the right side. So I'm going to use that same form here. And then we have about the array. OK, so this will fully populate our object. So if we create a an object, these will allow us to actually pass in data, default data, I'm sorry, not default data, but specified data for an employee. And we'll illustrate how to use both of these later in the video. Now the next thing we need to do, of course, is provide getters and setters. Um, now, probably getters and setters can be kind of tedious to implement. Now, if you do need to understand the difference between a getter and a setter, you know, so for example, with a getter, a getter has no parameters but returns a value. A setter has a parameter but typically doesn't return a value. So with you need to understand how to implement those. But there is a really nice shortcut. Once you get over that hump and understand how to do it, you can hit right click here and then choose source, which is right there, and generate getters and setters. And what Eclipse will do for you here is that it will take your data elements that you've defined hit select all here and if you want to implement getters and setters for all of them you just hit OK and there you go and that will generate all of the getters and setters for you which again is a tedium out of it alright so let's cr now that we've done that let me go in and create a new class and this is going to be our main class and since it's going to be the main class, we need a main method. I'm going to check this box right here, and it will generate for us the main method. Now I can create and use my employee object. So I can say employee e1, comma e2. Those create the object references. Then I can say e1 equals new employee. And this will use the default constructor. And then for E2, I can say new 
employee, an ID number, a last name, first name, and a salary. And then I can say system.out.println e1. Dot, let's just say last name. Get last name, sorry. And system.out.println e2.get. Last name. Now, if everything works the way we expect it to, I don't see any errors, we should actually see these values. So let's go ahead and run it. And we see that when we use the default constructor, we got no name as the person's name because we didn't specify a name and serva. Now what we could do is we could say here, we could say e1 and we could use the set method set last name to be Smith. And presumably now the object will then take on that value and when we run it we'll be Smith now. So our getters and setters seem to be working fine. Of course, you'd actually want to practice this to make sure that they were working OK. Now, let's improve our class a little bit. And one of the ways we can improve our class is by adding a get, a, uh, a two-string method. So I'm going to go back over to my employee class. And here at the bottom, below the last getter, oops, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and paste this in because I've gotten this all pre-prepared. But you'll notice that the toString method returns, returns all of the data elements. Now, I'll let you kind of parse this on your own, but you can see that all I'm doing is printing out ID equals, and then the value, name equals, and then the value, and then salary equals, and the value. And you'll notice I don't actually print it within the toString method. I simply return that as a string. If I go back to the main class, this gives me a little bit more flexibility because what I can do now, instead of having to say, printing out the last name I can it's much simpler I can print out e1 and e2 and it'll use the print print string method the two string method rather to print out the format so that it becomes much easier to print out the values and see the static the state of my objects so if I run this now you'll see it uses the two string method to actually print out the fact that we have Smith comma no name and we have serva comma mark along with the salaries if I went in and changed the salary for our unknown employee, I could say e1.set salary. And let's make them fairly well off here. Uh, maybe another zero to be well off. There we go. And if we save that, and now I run it, you'll see that our, our wealthy employee now has the uh, has $100,000 salary. I can prove this a little bit, maybe just kind of play around with it. I could, I could add some formatting. There's a lot of things I could do. But for now, I think you get the idea. The last thing we might want to do is add some utility methods. Outside of the getters and setters, there are other methods you might want to add to our employee class. So for example, I could say public and return a double. And we could say get monthly salary. This is a very simple method. But we could say return this dot salary divided by 12. And again, very simple method, but it does illustrate what the what this utility method is going to do. Again, I can go back now and use it in my main class. I could say that, and now I could say, uh, let me copy this, these two, so that you can see this. And now we'll say e1 dot get and you'll see this now appears as a method that I can use same thing here again it's important to realize simply methods on their own that is they're not static methods that like we've been using all along these are methods that have to be invoked relative to an object so the get monthly salary method for e1 is different than the get monthly salary for e2 they both do the same thing but they're going to return different values and if I run this you'll see 
that the salary for somebody with $100,000 makes 300 a month and the 50,000 about half that. So I hope this helps. Uh, I hope it shows you an illustration of how you might actually integrate and use an employee class. Um, and I encourage you to try some of these out on your own. Develop your own ideas. Try a student class, for example. Um, you might want to actually try a calculation of GPA, very basic calculation just to illustrate that you know this. Hopefully that works.